Great, perfect. So what I was uh, <coughs> about to move into was talking about, so if we understand our problems, they've been prioritized and we have an idea of the direction we want to go, how do you also go about building a compelling business case that will actually get approvals, not just from maybe your local function, but all levels of the business? Um, and maybe a good starting point is we can double click on a deals point about one of the first responses will be, well, we have an in-house solution for that. Um, what's uh, the what would be your response to deal? Well, it, the, the in-house solution is working perfectly fine. Why are we going to change it? <laughs> and I think most of the time, that's the response you're going to get. And I think that's where you got to start building out that business case and start presenting and providing an update. Look, it is not working perfectly fine. We have been firefighting for the last 10, 15, 20 years. We are going by doing it more on a tactical basis. But as we're getting into more and more regulatory challenges and requirements, we got to modernize. And it is not an easy thing to do. Anytime you're asking for money and every time you're asking for large sums of money, um, it becomes a challenge uh, based on the competing priorities. The good news is everybody understands regulation and regulatory requirements are mandatory. There is no way around it. So when we're looking at more regulatory type projects, the funding is a little bit easier to come by as opposed to some of the other initiatives. Um, what do we need to make sure we are building uh, within, within those business cases? Is, again, the objective information, calling out what I was mentioning earlier, what those challenges are, providing realistic baselines on, on what those things are today. If we are looking at any specific problem, how long is it taking us to solve? Um, how much is it costing us? And the cost, not only from those older system upgrades and maintenance and, and migrations and data and upkeep and keeping the lights on standpoint, but also keeping in mind how many people are we throwing at the overall process when they could be, should be, would be doing um, a lot more value at work rather than combining 20, 50 different Excel sheets and, 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 and manually looking at it. And then I think going forward, um, when we start talking about the benefits uh, uh, that could come out, of, come out of it, I think some of those should be realistic as well. Like we don't wanna be saying, okay, we are going to get 90% efficiencies out of the solution um, or out of any given process. I think those numbers need to be a little bit more realistic. In some situations, there may be 90% gains, uh, but they need to be very well uh, uh, backed up as well. When we are putting the business case together, um, I think it should take into consideration both qualitative and quantitative aspects into the picture. And I think uh, once that solid business case is prepared, it has a much better chances of uh, uh, getting approvals than not. And what I will also want to emphasize is uh, a lot of the times, and it is totally fair, you know your problems, you know the benefits that you would like to get out of any specific solution. Um, but tap on the shoulders of the vendors and consultants that you're working with. Uh, why? Because they may have implemented any given solution or they may have tackled this problem at 10 other clients as well. So they may have those realistic examples and realistic sample set to see, okay, we were able to do the similar thing in a similar situation. And as an outcome of that, this is our, what we were able to achieve to give you a little bit more credibility in some of those uh, future looking benefits and assumptions as well. Oh, that's absolutely um, <coughs> a great point. It reminds me um, actually of a, an essay, I um, not that I often read essays, but um, I read an essay by Stuart Butterfield, <laughs> the, the CEO of Slack um, yesterday actually. Um, and it was, and it's, and I'd recommend you reading it. It's called, We Don't Sell Saddles. Um, and it was a essay that he wrote to the organization um, uh, on the difficulty they were having on positioning their solution in the market. And that was because um, what a lot of uh, the organization was doing uh, when they were selling the software was they were talking more about just cost savings and functionality and AI. And the, and the whole essay and the piece is around, well, actually, what's the real outcome of implementing this solution? What's the wider benefit in terms of its transformation strategic objectives? And how will it actually help an organization get from A to B? 
And I think that's really important in a business case rather than just talking about, you know, some of the pure cost saving numbers. It's more about, well, how does this fit um, as a small piece of a bigger puzzle? Um, I don't know if that resonates with either yourself, Cohen or um, Melanie. Yes, yeah, so I'm sitting here nodding and I'm, I'm, what I'm thinking is that any solution needs to solve for today's complexities but it also needs to solve for the coming complexities that we may or may not even be aware of. And I think that's where the, the, you know, the airtight business case talks about, okay, this is where we're at today. This is what we're facing right now, but here's what we know is coming or here's what we believe is coming. And we don't have the ability to face those complexities. And it's, it reverts back to what I said a few minutes ago about the siloed um, the siloed positioning of regulatory compliance that has existed up until now. And we've basically been there, done that. We've solved for all of those in the individual business silos. And now it's being amped up to be across lines of business with client-centric client requirements that doesn't matter what products that client has. Well, we need to be able to break down those complexities and cross over across many of those lines of business and get, get moving. And we can't take a year to do it to a deal's point. We need the collaboration to Cohen's point and we need the tools to help us along that way because we've done all the heavy lifting we can do with throwing more and more people at it. So understanding those complexities now and what those complexities are gonna look like in the future. Pretty much sounds as a, as a digital transformation, right? That, that for some other um, departments within the bank industry already went through. But uh, I was thinking about the, the stages of learning and it starts with uh, unconscious incompetence. You have to get out of that. So I guess everyone needs to become an entrepreneur and really gets out, see what's in the market, uh, be interested about what's happening around you, what solutions are out in the market and, and reflect and maybe try to, to implement because what I've seen within the banks None of the banks really likes the Microsoft stack because I've been in several banks and all of them, they say, but hey, Microsoft Excel, not supported, guys, not supported. And I've, see, I've seen amazing tools on, built on Microsoft stack. But then when it really was to the point, then IT was always saying, no, no, not supported. So if you can make a really good case, which comes back to a basic business case as a startup, as an entrepreneur, then I think you've got a chance and you have to be willing to, to face also some of the challenges within the bank because many of the rec tech tools will be in the cloud and having or introducing a cloud solution within a bank is already a challenge on its own. But it starts with really willing the drive to make it happen. And I think that's something that you see much more within the compliance region that uh, we all seem to be waking up and, and really starting to be very excited about the possibilities that are out there in the industry. Well, I, I agree with everything you've, you've been <laughs> saying. And the only thing that I would add is, um, is the people part. <laughs> um, it's all well and good having nice shiny technology, but um, it also requires the right people, um, both um, on the vendor side, but also the buyer side, i.e. the client or the partner to actually want to make the change happen. So I think coupled with a good business case also requires uh, change management, especially when we're talking around the enterprise, large mm. financial institutions. It's all well and good that we've now got a piece of technology implemented, but um, is it actually on the laps <clears throat> of the people who are supposed to use it? Do they know how to use it? And are, more importantly, are they willing to use it? Um, <laughs> these are all things that um, also need to be considered. And, uh, you know, um, isn't it the, the big, yeah, sorry, sorry, Freddie, go. No, Excuse please me. go. No, no, I was no, thinking, is, isn't, is, it, is it not a bigger question that you, you need to provide comfort to the business that also with the tools in the future, you can actually make sure you do exactly what you do today. And that's the real fear of the first line, because they say, oh, it's nice to have nice tools. And, and you try AI, you, oh, oh, yeah, let's go on the playground. Let's play with the sand and the sandbox. But what they're really concerned about is that they actually apply and they don't end up in jail because something goes wrong in the company. So I think that's also a little bit of a game that needs to be played and, and played smartly. So therefore, entrepreneurs in the company. Yep. 
And Friday, just more of a thing, totally agree with uh, Melanie and Kwan, what you were, were just suggesting. And Friday around people, I think when we're looking at people, that is at the core of anything and everything that you do. Um, you may have technologies, you may have shiny objects, you may have everything, <laughs> but it's the people who are running all of that. And, and change management, absolutely the training aspects, how would you implement? How would you bring people on board? All of that comes into the picture at the right time. But I think you have to bring the people along with you on a ride from the very get go of it. If you're starting to analyze a solution, bring your partners along. Um, as we have all been suggesting that collaboration, that needs to be the key. Um, bringing down silos between um, your, your, your layer one, layer two, layer three of defenses. I think you gotta take a look at it holistically that how can we all work together? Maybe on the one solution, maybe you don't need three different solutions for three different lines of differences. Maybe it is one solution where you're working, but how are you going to bring down that barrier? If you are bringing all of those parties along with you on the right from the very get-go, even when you're doing vendor demos, let's do that together. When you're working on a business case, seek their input in terms of what their challenges are that they're facing and how can you resolve. Uh, give them an update that this is what you're facing and thinking from the overall capability standpoint, let alone uh, any given uh, tool or solution standpoint. And I think that has a much better um, probability of meeting needs from an organizational standpoint mm -hmm. rather than one specific uh, team standpoint. It has a much better chance of uh, uh, getting approvals for those business cases and moving forward along together as well.